This section of the course is called Lucy, the first human and early civilization. So before we start, where do you think that we originated from? Before Homo sapiens, i.e. us, spread across the entire planet, describe what you think the first Homo sapiens looked like. 200,000 years ago, in Northeast Africa, a new species evolved. Homo sapiens, aka us humans. Most things about humans are the same as many other species. We walk on two legs, we can run, we sweat, we have five different senses, like a lot of other animals. But mutations in the first human DNA has led to huge changes in how we behave in comparison to other species, causing a far greater impact on our planet. But the question is, how does DNA work? Mutations in our DNA at random occur during reproduction. A lot of the time, these can produce changes that are insignificant or disadvantageous. They'll then become less popular because those individuals who possess those mutations are less likely to reproduce. But specific mutations had led to two very significant changes which were very, very favourable 200,000 years ago. Those who inherited these mutations were therefore more likely to survive. Now, these significant changes were one, the development of consciousness, and two, dexterity, i.e. improved coordination of our hands and other movements that we can use to build tools. Let's take a moment to explore consciousness. Have you ever caught yourself mid-thought and said, no, that's stupid, or yep, yeah, that's it, that would work? Have you ever decided to put your feelings to one side so you can crack on with the task at hand? Now, the reason why you can do this is because you can observe the workings of your own mind. Essentially, you aren't your mind. Imagine your mind is like a ship and that ship would sail depending on the direction of the wind and the current. This is how many animals act. They have instincts and these instincts react to the environment. Now, imagine putting a captain on that ship. All of a sudden, the ship is no longer at the mercy of the wind and the current. The ship is influenced by the current and the wind, but not totally at its mercy. Our new and larger brains also mean that we can imagine very complex procedures and interactions with one another, even though they haven't happened yet. For example, you can go to the park and you can meet a group of kids who you have never met before, but because both groups can imagine the rules of football, you can successfully play a game of football. This brain power becomes very important when we need to coordinate large groups of people. Now, what I want you to do is participate in these tasks. When do you think, so first task, when do you think that large groups of early humans would have had to coordinate themselves? In which situations would this ability to coordinate oneself amongst other people become useful? For the second part of the task, I want you to split the class into four groups, each north, east, south and west. I want you to imagine this situation. The tribe is experiencing a famine and hasn't eaten in a week. A scout spots a group of wildebeests heading in our direction. They can be hunted but have four possible escape routes. North, where they came, east over the river, west through the forest and south directly through the village. How can the tribe catch or trap the wildebeests without them escaping or stampeding the village? First tip, they move very slowly through water, are scared of forest walls and will turn away if they hear them um, and they are also scared of fire. Each group has to separate um, to each pole to come up with an idea to hunt or trap the wildebeests for hunting.